YouTube has decided that this video is too offensive, and, you know, that's a good way for China to try to shut me down as well. If I avoid topics because of demonetization, then that means I'll be less apt to cover controversial things, but I'm not going to let that stop me. So I want to say thank you to all the people that support me on patreon.com slash 86 You're the only reason that this can happen. Why don't Chinese people just rise up? Now, this is a question I get constantly. Why don't Chinese people rise up and fight the oppressive government that restricts their most basic freedoms? I mean, we would do that, right? Well, to answer that, let's just make sure that you know who we're actually talking about here. We're talking about the Chinese government. You know, the government that literally removed the candle and cake emoji before the anniversary of Tiananmen Square massacre so that people couldn't remember what happened or show their remembrance. Keep it up, CCP. You're only fueling the anger of countless Chinese dissidents here in the USA who are building monuments in your honor. It's not even legal to talk about it in China, you know, Tiananmen Square, unless you talk about how awesome it was that the government mowed over thousands of innocent students with rifles and tanks. That's fine. But they also banned Hong Kongers, which are supposed to have a freedom of speech, from having a candlelight vigil, which they do every single year to remember the anniversary of Tiananmen Square. Good thing that the EU and the US consulates had the uh, ingenious idea of having their own candlelight vigil in their windows. And then of course, China freaked out and had a hissy fit. Anyway, this giant baby of a government controls, stamps on, and ruins any idea of freedom that Chinese people might have. So why don't they just stand up? Well, they do. In fact, public uprisings and demonstrations of discontent are so frequent that the government stopped counting them. You know why you don't hear about them? Well, the government has a 100% iron-fisted grip on what goes in and what comes out of China. Yes, stuff leaks, but by and large, if the CCP is good at one thing, it's censorship and restricting information and subsequently punishing and killing and disappearing anyone that tries otherwise. In China, for example, you can't own your own land. No, you lease your property from the government for 70 years. I bought an apartment in China. Technically, I didn't own it. The government owns it. In that time frame, you know, those 70 years, the Chinese government can actually just take that away from you. The people who lose their property often receive stipends or rewards from the government, and some people are happy about that. But many times, it's either not enough money or they don't want to give up their homes. I've seen entire villages where people are placated. Their farmland is gone and they have nothing to do anymore. They live in a concrete box far outside the city. This is a massive cause of unrest in China. People make makeshift guns out of fireworks and they fight back. People also demonstrate when local officials commit crimes like rape. You often see Chinese government officials get away with pretty much whatever they want, but sometimes people just can't hold in their hatred. People demonstrate when poison milk or vaccines kill their children. Obviously, they're going to demonstrate about that. The thing is, the government was always brutal when it came to these demonstrations, but it's way worse than it used to be. You see, there's this hilariously wrong statistic out there that 95% of people in China support their own government. In fact, that means it is the most supported government in the entire world. What you don't see in that study is that actually what they mean is the idea of the central government. When you ask Chinese people if they support their local government, it's down closer to 10% approval rate. So that means that close to 90% of Chinese people, in fact, are not very satisfied with their local government. And guess what? A little secret here. They're the same thing. You see, you don't operate, you don't deal with the central government in China. You don't go and tell Beijing your transgressions at a high level. You deal with your local government, that oppressive one. That actually is the CCP. We're not talking about state laws here. We're not talking about a federal republic. We're talking about a one-party dictatorship. So that fallacy out of the way, let's talk about why it's gotten so bad. China doesn't tolerate the smallest amount of dissent any longer. Not that it did before, but there was a bit of a gray area, you know? Stuff happens and China's changing. With the introduction of a kind of a market-based economy, things are bound to be a little bit different than they were back in the, you know, food ration tickets times under Mao Zedong. But you know that China is now lost and gone all the way to North Korean level propaganda or Chairman Mao level propaganda when they're pumping out stellar tracks like 
It's the Communist Party of China that makes China great. Makes China great. The CPC makes China great. The CPC fights for Chinese men. The CPC relieves people's pain. She helps the people to win their rights. She comes to China, hope and pray. I kid you not, university students just put out that song. Anyway, most recently, look at these poor students in Jiangsu and Zhejiang provinces. This is fascinating to me. They were protesting. Yeah, you got that right. In mainland China, they were protesting. And you know what they were protesting about? They were trying to overthrow the government. They were just protesting about what they thought the government was going to do with their college degrees. In the early 90s, the Chinese government sought to control the intellectuals just so that another Tiananmen Square didn't happen. I mean, that was a bad look for the Chinese government. They did this by making bachelor's degrees very easy and accessible. If everyone goes to college, then by their logic, they can shove more propaganda down their throat and then monitor them. In this process of incentivizing people to go study in universities, they demonized vocational schools. You know, people with blue collar backgrounds something that kind of built China to where it was. The idea was that if the CCP could corral enough kids into these colleges, they could control them and at the same time, prepare China for a more white collar economy, you know, to be a more dominant player on the global sphere. Now, the way that China works is that you have to get a high score on something called the Gaokao. And the Gaokao is kind of like uh, SATs on steroids. It's an end of the year test that high schoolers take in order to get into a good university. Obviously, many people don't get in. I mean, the pressure is so high that many students commit suicide. So China set up the, these other universities where you could also get a bachelor's degree, but because you didn't get such good grades, you pay about five to 10 times more than a kid that got good grades. It's kind of like a nightmare marriage between a state-run economy and a free market economy. You know, the worst of both worlds. The problem was is that they didn't plan ahead for the incoming demographic collapse. That would happen in the near future. That's the thing is that China doesn't prepare for the future. I don't know where people get this idea. The Chinese government does not prepare for anything ahead of time. In fact, it just tries to fix the problems it's already created. In May of 2020, the Education Bureau of the Chinese government decided that it was going to merge vocational blue collar schools, kind of like trade schools, something that Chinese people really looked down upon because of the CCP's demonization of them. You know, the entire campaign they came up with to look down on blue collar degrees. And they wanted to merge these vocational schools with these expensive bachelor degree schools. The reason that they wanted to do this was because China is very worried that there's going to be no one of working age that is going to, you know, work. They've created a huge generation with the one child policy for 30 years of white collar degree people. We're talking kids that don't have brothers or sisters and now in the future have to take care of their entire family. A lot of these people won't be able to support that family on their meager salary out of college while their manufacturing or blue collar base has been demonized to the point where they don't want to be labeled as low class anymore and they don't choose vocational degrees. You won't find Chinese parents anymore satisfied with their child getting a blue collar job. And that was by design. Well, the problem is when you don't choose vocational degrees anymore or labor or skill based things, kind of like trade school jobs, you can't be the world's factory anymore. And that's what China has been. And that's what they built their economy on is being the factory of the world. So China desperately needs skilled laborers, especially if they're gonna be taking care of their demographic collapse in the coming future. So they decided that they would merge those excess white collar degree schools with vocational ones. No one would notice, right? The problem is no one was consulted. The students and the parents, they had no clue. It wasn't teased or released to the media ahead of time. Nope. The students just found out one day that the government was basically going to give them vocational school degrees after they paid all of this money and studied for so long to get a bachelor's degree. Many of them were very concerned because a lot of them wanted to actually work for the Chinese government. And do you know what the minimum requirement is to work for the Chinese government? It's a bachelor's degree. So they were really naturally freaked out. They started some small protests and they grew larger. 
but they were non-violent and fairly non-confrontational. The students demanded that they get their bachelor's degree, and it's not a vocational degree. Not only that, they don't even want that word attached. So let's just say the Chinese government does capitulate and say, you know what, you can get your bachelor's degree, but it's gonna say blah blah blah, vocational university. Nope, that wasn't good enough. The kids growing up under this generation have learned that from the Chinese government that having a blue collar label attached to your degree is going to hurt your future job prospects. So, you know what the response was to these protests? The SWAT team. <laughs> Police. Chengguan, which are just paid government thugs. Road closures. Arrests. Families of uh, arrested students have been threatened now. Police brutality, beating of young women, and so much more. The thing is, there wouldn't need to be a response like this if two conditions were met. Number one, if China had freedom of speech, which it absolutely doesn't and will never budge on that. Number two, if China simply didn't create these problems to begin with. You see, nature is real, and there's a reason for things to go in a natural way. When man tries to control everything, disaster ensues. You can see this with the way that China operates. The massive dams, Chairman Mao's control of nature, the killing of sparrows and locusts that led to the death of tens of millions of people, the greatest famine in history. The government policies that lead to unnatural consequences, like famine. One child policy, the two child policy, hey, now the three child policy forced sterilization, concentration camps of uh, minorities. All of these things, when you try to control humanity, you try to control free will to a point where it just becomes stifling and oppressive, you create problems. The household registration system, for example, is something that limits where you can live and work. That does not allow for a natural progression of mankind. People are objects to the Chinese government. Naturally, people would want to gravitate towards certain jobs and positions, but no, even that has to be controlled. There's a huge problem in the coming future where kids who are born into one-child families now have to take care of mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, and their wives' families. These kids with white-collar degrees might not be able to do that, and there just aren't that many jobs to go around. China also fears losing their base as the world's manufacturer, because they've told their populace that they need a white-collar degree. Now you want to force kids to suddenly downgrade and get a blue collar job? It doesn't work like that. CCP supporters constantly chide the government and say that China plays the long game. They're thinking hundreds of years ahead, maybe even thousands. No, China is constantly coming up with grand plans to control and fix the next looming problem of their own design. You think China's safe? Well, thousands of kids are protesting in the street. And they're getting beat up with police batons, threatened with death, thrown in jail, and their families are threatened. The CCP has now infiltrated the whole world to change the narrative. I mean, they've already co-opted American identity politics somewhat successfully. China certainly loves to use movements in other countries and then turn them against them. Where's the Chinese Lives Matter movement? People do realize that the greatest enemy of the Chinese people is in fact the Chinese government, right? Students can't even protest about their degree designation. And look at what happens. Now China's arresting people. And you know what they're saying? I kid you not. They're now saying that these student protests in these universities are foreign forces, like the US government, trying to smear China and start a color revolution. I'm not joking. Here we are, full circle. This is how the Chinese government operates. It creates a problem because of its excessive control, blames outside anti-China forces, and then punishes its own citizens for its own mistakes. Do you want this style of government? If yes, then keep your mouth shut and carry on. If not, then join me and the thousands of other Chinese dissidents who've had enough of this shit and let your lawmakers and congressmen know that the threat of our age is not the Chinese people. Now, 
It's the Chinese government. 